The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. How weird is it that there's the Zoom recorder, but then also the Zoom app? I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I'm recording locally here in heaven, Mike. I mean, I'm so glad. I mean, I didn't know that heaven had recording equipment. It's fine. No, it's all backed up to the cloud. Oh, man. I, <laughs> that is so genius. So you have all, you have all of like my, my like wiener pictures and stuff in the cloud. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. man. I'm so no, sorry about that. Video of every moment of your life. Oh, man, I'm so sorry you've got about it all, that, God. You've got it all backed up for the trial. <laughs> oh, man. You were asking me about comedy before we started recording. I feel like you would be so good in the clubs. I mean, I, I don't understand why it's not working. Everybody's, they're afraid of me. Okay. That God is a comedian playing to an audience too afraid to laugh. Right. It is an old, old uh, saying. Uh, no one's quite sure who said it first. Some people think it's Voltaire. Other people always want to give it to Benjamin Franklin, whatever. <laughs> Whoever said it, it's, it's really true. I go out there, I do my set, I do a tight five, and I think it's just killer material. And right. everybody in the audience is like, <laughs> <laughs> Right. Man, you that's, that's ridiculous. I, uh, it's, it's actually kind of funny that you're able to do that you're able to actually kill with those five minutes because a lot of i kill myself i yeah. make myself laugh but the audience is just like i think you know some people will laugh because they're afraid and it's like i can tell that's a fake nervous laugh you know yeah God. and but everybody else is just they're just terrified at all times oh, is god going to smite me right is god going to kick me out of heaven and send me down to hell. And it doesn't uh, matter how much I promise at the beginning of the open mic night there in heaven. Um, I don't know. Or maybe my material stinks. To be fair, you do kind of have a track record for kicking people out of heaven. You know, that's kind of right, the first thing you did. Right. I've got a bad um, track record in a lot of areas. Yeah, so it does kind of make sense that people are afraid that you'll kick them out of heaven just because of the whole thing that happened with, like, Satan. You right. Know? Yeah. Right. But I mean, at the end, look, at the end of the day, man, I, uh, I'm so glad that you're here. And I finally get to talk to you on my podcast. I feel like we've talked since I've been born, really. Uh, but it's kind of been a one way conversation. I never feel like yeah. I've been able to get the reply. But thank, thankfully, you're here, you agreed to do this podcast. And, uh, and yeah, so I'm excited to have you. Yeah, it's it's no problem, Mike. Mo most prayers and messages I just mute and I don't <laughs> listen to. But, you know, sure. I started listening to yours and uh, that's why I'm here. Okay. Well, thankfully, my last prayers have been pretty entertaining and hilarious. So thank you so much for, for answering them. Um, and uh, is it weird that I also promote my podcast in my prayers? Absolutely. But, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but thank you for doing that so much. Oh, which reminds me, uh, yes. you can check out my podcast, The God Pod, anytime you want. Oh, in fact, uh, I actually was on The God Pod. That's uh, right. I was, yeah, I was uh, privileged to be on it. Uh, and I was on there with your friends, Death and Satan, yeah. which uh, was really ridiculous. Uh, I was, you know, I've been afraid of them my entire life. And it's not that bad, actually. Once you get started with the Full House theme song and everything, you start to realize everywhere how... Everywhere you look. Everywhere there's a there's heart. There's a heart. Yeah. I mean, you start there's to really face. realize how we're all the same people. There's <laughs> a start... butt. <laughs> a butt to hold on to. Someone you. <laughs> you are on the right podcast, God. This is, <laughs> this is exactly what we're looking for. Um, so... You know, I want to get to know more about you, and I have uh, a few questions here uh, that okay. I want to ask well, you. Well, to be honest, just out the out the gate. Yes. I um, family. Uh, excuse me. Full House wasn't my favorite. In really? fact, I still remember watching the first episode and being like, "Really? Are we, are we doing this? We have to." <laughs> and I was like, "No, God, no! It's part of the TJ TGIF lineup." And back then, TGIF was a big brand thing for me. 
Correct. You know, like it's it's thank God it's Friday. Exactly. Thank uh, me, it's Friday. Exactly. So I, it was a big sponsorship opportunity for me. And, you know, Full House came on and I love the theme song and I love the intro. And I'm watching it and I'm just like, this is a little too smarmy for me. Right. You know, uh, it's just the smarm is off the charts. <laughs> uh, no, I was more of a Family Matters. Right. Kind absolutely. Of God. Family Matters, I love. Yeah, Family Matters is so great, man. I mean, the, uh, I mean, er, as I said on your podcast, Urkel is the Nick Fury of the TGIF universe. Urkel, I mean, it was great even before Urkel, but Urkel changed the game, obviously. Of course. Now he's yeah. got Urkel. But yeah. my favorite thing, I think, that made me just initially love it, and this gives you a hint into my personality, is that um, the father, who was a police officer, <laughs> in the show was also the police officer in die hard absolutely <laughs> i love it <laughs> and for me i was like it's the same guy yeah. this is what happens when he goes home yeah and I, it's just to this day i would already watch the whole show i want to yeah. watch die hard first and then i'll start watching family matters and then yes. in between each season i'll watch die hard again it actually does make sense when you think about it because, you know, the, I believe Nakatomi Plaza is in Los Angeles. So yeah. he has this crazy night and then he's just like, you know what, I'm going back home to Chicago. <laughs> it just makes so much sense that he would start Family Matters. You know? I don't even care about the city. Uh, don't worry. You're right. Damn it. It's different cities. Yeah. Okay. This was before he moved to Chicago. I would assume so, because at the end of the day, also, and this is actually canon, uh, the ho the uh, apartment complex that uh, they are in Perfect Strangers, Harriet Winslow is the elevator operator. <gasps> so it's actually a crossover uh, from Perfect Strangers. And where Strangers. does Perfect Strangers take place? Yeah, uh, I believe in Chicago. Yeah. Mm, yeah, everything took place in Chicago. I like Perfect Strangers a lot, too. Yeah, that's there a really a good happy one. Happy Dance. Oh man, you want to talk about great theme songs right there. That's probably, I would actually say that's- How does that, that one go? Shit. That's... So that theme song goes, standing tall on the oh, wings yeah. of my dreams. On the wings of, wings of my dreams. Yeah, rise and fall. <laughs> yeah. It's this amazing song where you're just like, is this song still about a show where two roommates don't get along? Like, that's <laughs> kind of insane. Like, we're talking about dreams and, like, flying and, oh, my gosh. On wings what a, of eagles. Yeah what, a, yeah. what a beautiful song that could 100% have just been on the radio. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they just put it for a theme song for oh, two wow. roommates that don't get along. Sorry. I could just keep this going forever. What, what were your questions? No, like? as can and I and you are more than welcome to tangent on any TGIF uh, show ever. What were the so, other one? I mean, say, it was like Perfect Strangers, Full House, Family Matters. What was there was always a fourth one that was like floating in and out of being canceled. Sure, you're 100 percent right. There were some interchangeable yes. shows. I love so, that for me. <laughs> you uh, so they at one point they had um, Home Improvement. That was mm -hmm, a, that was one. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that you was know, a big so, one. Yeah, yeah was, that was a real big one. Uh, and then they also had Sabrina the Teenage Witch. That was hmm. one. Um, and uh, one of my favorites, which became a staple after Family Matters was done, was Boy Meets World. Right. Yeah. So I, I don't, I'm not sure if you watch Boy Meets World, God, but I, that's one of my favorite ones for sure. I watched that. That one was about Jesus, right? um no it was about oh. uh <laughs> no it wasn't about jesus however boy I would meets understand, world world I would understand hangs boy. exactly i would understand 100 percent why you would think the show was boy, about excuse jesus. me i had that wrong boy meets world world crucifies boy exactly yeah that was that was holy the, shit this, yes absolutely yeah this is basically uh, what you get on the god pod friends i love it i, I mean <laughs> blasphemy and, all day long. The good is it really blasphemy when I do it? I don't think it's blasphemy at all. I just think it's it's just true when you really think about it. Yeah. I mean, and the good thing about Jesus is you actually informed me. Jesus is your producer on your podcast. He's on the show, actually. Yeah. He, oh, but he does the audio. 
yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he he is unbelievable at producing because I was on your yeah. podcast on Friday and that <laughs> podcast was out Monday morning. I have to tell him that you said that. It was um, unbelievable. I couldn't believe how great at producing he was. It was yeah. it was unreal. He's um, Jesus is a pro. I mean, he turns water into wine and turns uh, raw audio tracks into, and, into audio gold like yeah. instantly. I mean, it's Jesus. That's so that's so great. Well, I want to know more about you, God. Uh, can you please tell me? This, this is going to be a, a really crazy question for people that have listened to the podcast from the beginning uh where did you grow up uh yeah i mean i always was you exactly know? i was just sort of there i the, love, the first thing that i can remember is i'm just there in the in in the universe you know in the darkness excuse me the universe didn't exist yet i was just there in the void you know and there was just nothing and i feel like I don't know if I had parents, but it feels like I was abandoned in the nothingness of the void, <laughs> this hole uh, that I'm in. And it was really boring. And so I started talking to myself. <laughs> okay. And that's why, you know, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you know, the Trinity exists. Oh, it's that just makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Absolutely. and so we're all talking to ourselves, and then eventually we're like, this is boring. We should make some, like, do something, make mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And it took me a long, long, long time yeah. to ever do anything. And then finally, I was just like, because I'm such a procrastinator. Right. That's it. Four billion years from now, we're doing this thing. And put it on the calendar and and i was like listen we're gonna do this thing in like seven days mm -hmm. we're gonna get it all done in seven days it's a big big project haven't done anything like this before and yeah That's by day amazing. Six, by day six though i was wiped i had to take a day off yeah i definitely don't blame you because i've done lego sets before and yeah. usually they take me about six days and by the seventh day i'm spent just so. wiped your, mm -hmm. your hands hurt you know uh you just need to sleep right uh looking back i guess since i have nothing but time i could have taken longer <laughs> than that and maybe done yeah. a better job mm -hmm. uh Anyway, what are you going to do? No, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. In fact, I, this is actually uh, uh, something that I'm curious about here because, you know, every child goes through a schooling system. They get some education and all that kind of stuff. Did you ever go to school? Did, uh, did in fact... Self-taught. You're self-taught. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I, that's, that's beautiful. You're but, right. And I may have abandonment issues. Mm-hmm. And I may have some rage connected to that. <laughs> right. But I also love and I learn and I have therapy and <laughs> I, 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 humans have taught me a lot of things. Right. And, I'm and always learning. As a human, I would definitely say that you have taught me a lot of things as well. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, these, it's an interchangeable relationship. What, what did I teach you? You've taught me so many things. Like you've taught me uh, to love my neighbor. Oh, you've that was Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, technically you are Jesus, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's all you, dude. Yeah, that's all you. Right. That's so, right. I mean, um, I mean, you taught me how to love people. Uh, you taught me how to obey my parents. Uh, you taught me to never tell a lie. Um, you taught me not to covet on my neighbor's wife, even though she's so freaking hot. I don't know if you've seen her. But Ooh. she is, I mean, it's unreal. It's like she's, she knows I'm looking through the window sometimes when she's changing. <laughs> because it's unreal. Uh, it's but unreal. yeah, I, I'm trying real hard not to, not to lust after her. Yeah, lust is a tough one. Yeah, it's a real tough one, man. You made women so beautiful. Why did you do that? I know, right? <laughs> women are so excruciatingly beautiful. Yeah. And men are just mounds of clay and weird yeah. <laughs> You're so with, right. With and penises in fact, that are like 
Blah. Yeah, and that's the thing. I, you know, going going into like my, you know, just me personally, you know, I would say it's really difficult because women are so beautiful that they could be in a space costume, and I would say, wow, that's the hottest woman I've ever seen. Ooh, you know, that's yeah. a good kink. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a I'm a NASA nerd. NASA yeah. white spacesuit with the gigantic helmet. Yeah. Oh, every any any time I see a spacesuit, I always tell women to back that NASA. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Girl, what you playing with? That. Back that NASA. Um, but <laughs> nice. No, this is great. I um do you do you by any chance and I don't want you to speak for him, but you know, as well, you are him. So uh do you know what Jesus' schooling system was like? Like who did he sit with at the lunch table or anything like that? Right. Um, I think they mostly did homeschooling. Sure. Back then, you yeah. know, he would go to temple and learn stuff there, I guess. That's interesting. You know? Oh, he he learned how to do carpentry from his from Joseph. Yeah, from Joseph. Did uh, did you ever have any talks with Joseph? You know, was he like kind of jealous about the whole thing, you know, between you and Mary or Um You know, he never was. That's good. He always had a good attitude about it. You found you found a good man, to be honest. It's honestly, it's a sore subject. We had a paternity test on sure. the God Pod mm -hmm. um, last December. It was like the last episode before Christmas. Oh wow, really? Or the second to last, and we had a friggin' paternity test. And uh, did you bring Maury Povich on? Moses Povich. Moses Povich. Oh my gosh, that's even better. Moses Povich led the show, and it yeah, was yeah, that's Old done, Testament Maury. It was done in the style of. Uh, Amori Povich, yeah, and Satan was there, Santa was there, Joseph was there, Mary was there. That Jesus, is unbelievable. He, it was quite the lineup, and uh, I think, you know, um, the three wise men were there. Wow. You know, the usual suspects. That's and um, Yeah, I won't give away the ending because I really want you to listen to the podcast <laughs> no absolutely i i definitely agree in fact i would actually say uh given this conversation uh was joseph the first simp in what, what, in, what is okay what is a simp I, well a, a simp as the kids would say is someone who is very a simpleton uh, a simpleton yeah, I would say a simpleton, someone, uh, a, a man who is very lovey-dovey and will like, you know, do anything for a woman and, and all these kinds of things. Basically just me, I would say. That's probably the best way to put it. So if you're a nice person, you're now just a simp? Yeah, you're now just a, a bad person. That's apparently. insane. Yeah. Yeah, women don't like being respected for some reason. I'm not really sure. That's not true. <laughs> that's not why. true either. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not true. I'm joking about that. But uh, but yeah, I if you... Everybody if I, just wants to fuck the hot person. Yes. Okay, yeah. whether you're a guy or a girl, yeah, you want that to is fuck the true. hottest people you can. Okay? That that's, is very true. That's all it is. That's all it will ever be. <laughs> that and, is very true for sure. So, I, uh, it does it, suck, though, <laughs> when you're not that person. <laughs> oh, gosh, I agree. Absolutely. Oh, uh, why did I make things this way? I'm, uh, that's what I'm asking. I mean, oh, it's so, I'm so difficult. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm like, don't covet. I feel like those rules are impossible. Yeah. yeah. Don't covet. It's really hard, man. Do you have any idea how many times I've wanted to kill people, but you're just like, no, whoa, don't do that. Whoa. You know? <laughs> This is a podcast, right? You're going to publish this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, deletable, Mike. It's deletable. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I know. You, those, are, those are feelings. I saw a, a great tweet the other day that said, religion makes it impossible to be a good person. Yeah. So that you keep coming back feeling broken. And... Yeah. Then you drop some more money in the collection plate, which reminds you, which reminds me that I have a Patreon as well, but uh, I've never seen a dime from that collection plate. But uh, so interesting. I and I feel like some of these commandments, I I regret most of them. I would say "Thou shall not kill" is still a good one. Right, I um, agree. I don't think we needed to have a whole commandment about not making fun of me. Right. <laughs> 
Uh, looking back, um, that's particularly cringe. I'm, I'm so glad that you're saying that for our, uh, our Gen Z listeners. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for using the word cringe. Well, so I is Joseph that. a simp? I, uh, no, I don't think that he's a simp. That's good. He might just be a pimp. Okay, that's, that's good. Knowing you and knowing your history, you talk to a lot of pimps and hoes. For yeah, sure. I feel like this could be a good title for a rap album or a comedy <laughs> album. Sure. Simp to pimp. Simp to pimp. <laughs> has, yeah. has the Gen Z come up with that yet? Not yet, but yes. I mean, you got to patent it right now for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Pimp to simp. That's that's amazing. No, no, uh, no, no, no. You had it wrong. Oh, simp I apologize. <laughs> from simp to pimp. It's the new from zero to hero. That is very good. I, I will say... I just made that up right now. No, I will say if, if it were my album or my book, it would 100% be Pimp to Simp. Um, <laughs> no, I think that could be hilarious. And you have yeah. the picture of you before, just like, you know, <laughs> wearing a t-shirt, looking sad. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then the Pimp photo, of course. Yes, 100%. You're decked out with feathers and Ebola and... Did I say Ebola? No. <laughs> Ebola. Yeah, that's the whole thing about pimps. They had feathers, canes, and Ebola. That was the whole thing Ebola. about them. Yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> a bull- I don't know what even I'm saying anymore. What am I even thinking, thinking of? No, I love this. Um, so the next thing I want to ask you is, like, pop culture-wise, what were your what were your pop culture things that we were that we liked? I mean, granted, we talked a little bit about the TGIF universe. We can expand upon upon that if you'd like, but. Do oh, you have any other television like, shows, music? Oh, you know, I've got a dark sense of humor. Sure. I mean, it takes a lot to make me laugh. You know, it's been, I've been around for a long, long time. This is kind of my question I was wondering about. How do you feel about an entire genre of music just being about you? Like, do you, um, some of does, it's really good. Some of it's yeah. really, really bad. Right. I agree. Mostly. Actually, there is there is quite a lot uh, that is very good. I will say that there are some songs where it feels a little creepy. Yeah, it's it's sexual, overtly sexual. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I I'm I'm a I'm a fan of the classics. You know, the hymns, there's a lot of classic hymns, right? There are, dude, Amazing I'm telling Grace. you, which Amazing Grace slaps still. That it song slaps. Yes. It's it slaps so hard, man. There's there's a lot of hymns that definitely slap. I love that. But I mean I've boned to that song. But <laughs> um Yeah. And Ave Maria, of course. Yeah, of course. Ave Maria that's a, is like that's a gentle bone. Yeah. But that's, uh the That's the Marvin Gaye of hymns right there. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, you know, a lot of this new stuff I really dislike, like Christian yeah. rock. Yes. Or uh, a lot of churches do this thing now where they've got someone at the front playing guitar and then you have to read the lyrics like off a of TV at the <laughs> top and you look along and you, they just recite along like sheep. Yeah, and then if people aren't singing well enough, the pastor's wife gets angry. <laughs> That's very true. Oh my goodness! Because she's the star of the show. That's very true. Yeah, she's the one doing all her runs and harmonizing with people. But if she, if <laughs> all the harmonizing, yeah. just send me to hell now. Yeah, if she can't. If she can't find the note, how she's supposed to harmonize? I get it. I get it, Estelle. Oh, or whatever your it's name all is. the important thing is that church. It's about the people doing the music yes and giving them attention yeah well as you know god uh i'm not sure if you remember but as you know i i was a worship leader for many many years oh uh, yes so I was, yeah so i was definitely a part of it and one thing that i will definitely say is that there were some times where it definitely felt weird like doing like for example you we were talking about like the overtly sexual things and you know like there was Jesus a song just hanging up there half naked yeah. tiny little loincloth just dr- dripping down and he's got like a six pack of abs yes. and he's all muscled up and toned yeah and, you know, like his clavicle is just uh. yeah and you have no idea whether you whether you want to like 
pray or get a boner it's just it's really strange (laughs) but because because that's the thing is there's only two kinds of jesus there's hot jesus and there's scary jesus yeah and so the thing about scary jesus is like when i was a kid there would be we would go around the temple and you know let's say me and my friends are playing hide and seek which is something we did in the temple what is scary jesus is he the one that's like flipping tables no, scary Jesus is like the weird paintings that people make of Jesus, like the weird portraits where he has oh. um, brown hair and blue eyes. Oh, right. Like um, Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan. Yes, like Ewan Jesus. McGregor or like something like that, where it's just like you, he's not really necessarily angry or scary per se, but the, the vibe, the overall vibe of the room is just kind of scary. Um, and I always felt kind of bad about that as a kid because I shouldn't have been scared of Jesus. Like Jesus is someone who I believe in and he loves me and stuff like that. But I always felt like kind of scared. Is that weird that I felt that way? Scared of, uh, Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Jesus. Yeah. Know it's why. like, is he, is he simp Jesus that loves me or is he about <laughs> to pull out a lightsaber and chop off my arm? Yeah. That's, yeah, I that's that. funny. I, I don't think, I mean, though I, though I did think Is that Jesus was funny. Is Jesus a simp? <laughs> yes, I was just about to ask that. But however, one thing I will say is, though it did make me laugh, I don't think Jesus is a simp. Okay. Um, I don't. Um, I don't, he, again, I'm unclear on what a simp is. He'll flip a table on you. Exactly, which is something a simp would He'll never do. He'll go full Teresa on you. Yes, which is exactly, exactly. something a, a, a simp would never do. Oh, okay, a simp would never do. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Jesus yeah. does turn the other cheek, but... Absolutely. Um, That's one thing that I learned from Jesus. Whenever I got a spanking as a kid, I would turn the other cheek. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so... Um, that's just a little bit about me, but, (laughs) but one thing that I wanted to say was, uh, we were talking about worship and things like that. And it was always so strange with certain songs. And I I just want to get your thoughts on this, God, is that, you know, though the theme of it was correct and though Mm. the, uh, the intention was correct. Mm-hmm. A lot of these things would just be overtly sexual. Like, oh, the uh, road to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> that is that is very true. In it's fact, paved. In fact, the first uh, the first song that we would sing was a song that I'm sure you know uh, called "Lion and the Lamb." And the first song or the first lyric in that song is "He's coming on the clouds." Um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> can you sing over? Can you sing that part? <laughs> so. And, and as a worship leader, you're supposed to kind of lead people into what you're supposed to say. So it's eight in the morning and you're saying, all right, here we go, guys. He's coming on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. The kings and kingdoms will, you know, so like. He's coming on. I mean, yeah. it's true. Yeah, I just, I honestly you gotta just come don't. somewhere. Yeah, you got to come somewhere for sure. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, I just, uh, I just find it really weird that people are talking too much about Jesus coming (laughs) and about Jesus being inside of them. Not an Um, accident. Right. (laughs) Yeah. He's coming on the clouds. He's inside of you now. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's something that I always found kind of strange, but I mean, and I'm not sure if that's something that, that you like. It's humans Um, writing the song. I think writing these songs, I feel like they have, you know, sexual feelings for Sure their lord and savior i mean he's the king of kings right he's probably like a billionaire you know you know they'll probably ask him to host snl next thing and the funny thing too is that uh this is something i didn't know (laughs) until i started talking to you was that churches the churches that i grew up in were always saying that when you gave tithing that they went to god and you never you said you've never gotten a dime not a penny really not Man, that's... one nickel wow that's unbelievable also because, no like... quarters right or well, 50 and... cent pieces no dollars no two dollars yeah. those are rare yeah no shekel no two shekel. dollar bill yeah no shekels, not, not a single nothing. shekel nada wow Dilch. that's 
that's crazy because I was wondering, well, because you were, you were alluding to Jesus being a billionaire. Does he, does he hoard no, that's all the what money people from think. you? That's what people oh, that's think. what people think. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, it, it definitely makes a lot more sense that he's not a billionaire because no, he was I mean, homeless. He flipped, the, he flipped the table. Who did exactly. he flip the table on? Yeah. The tax collectors. Exactly. Why did Jesus flip the table on the tax collectors? Because he couldn't pay his taxes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I honestly, I don't blame him. I've flipped a lot of tax collectors' tables. They still find my address and send me the envelope anyway. Um, but yeah, I've I've certainly tried uh, to flip some tables, but it doesn't work like it used to, sadly. Um, another thing I was going to ask you, just to go into our next bit, which is a bit that we love to do on this show. Uh, what were your favorite snacks? Oh, wow. Like, I'm sure nobody's ever asked you that, God. Wow. So I, I like sacrificial lamb. Right. Obviously. Absolutely. Um, but it's hard to come by. It's hard to get someone yeah. who knows what they're doing gets the seasoning right. Right. Uh, I like Doritos. That's such a vast, that's such a vast have, thing. Sacrificial lamb ba- and Doritos. <laughs> I'm pretty basic, you know. Yeah. I like a lot of the things you humans have created. Sure. Before I don't blame that, it. I would just have to eat whale. And it's like. Correct. Yeah, yeah. that's a total flex, but it's just very <laughs> fatty. Yeah. Very well, fatty. that's kind of what they're good, known for. It's not a good cut. It's not good right. Cut. Yeah. Um, yeah, but basically anything. Sometimes I'll eat a planet. Like Galactus, sure. you know. Okay, is that why is that why Uranus is so small? Ooh. <laughs> I promise that wasn't wordplay. Um, I like it. <laughs> I mean, if God were to have a, a, an anus, it would be the size of a planet. So. I love that humans named a planet Uranus. <laughs> That's yeah, good. I like it. Um, but yeah, I I love it so. Uh, a thing that we love to talk about on this show is cereal because cereal uh, has a lot to do with childhood. It's kind of the, the all encompassing food of childhood. Uh, So did you have any cereals that you liked uh, that humans made growing up or, or even now that you like to snack on? Um, I guess I'm pretty basic. I like, uh, you know, frosted flakes. Sure. They're great. Right. Tony the tiger. Yeah. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> uh, like Raisin Bran. Um, Lucky Charms, I don't like. Really? Why is that? I don't trust that leprechaun. Okay, fair enough. I would have thought just because of all the symbolism in Lucky Charms. They're very, no, they're yeah, very no. sacrilegious. Be, yeah, but you eat it and it's just like, this is evil. Say you yeah. had something to do with this. Leprechaun. However, one thing I will say, limited edition uh, Lucky Charms right now, they have galactic Lucky Charms, <gasps> so uh, which is actually more uh, a God-friendly because, as you know, the Enneagram is the, is the Christian horoscope. Uh, so, yeah, the, uh, they, they now have Enneagram Lucky Charms. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, like, I'm a, I like Honey Nut Cheerios. Has to be Honey Nut, though. Sure. Well, and, and this is something I've talked about on stage, God, but maybe we can kind of crack this a little bit. Why do you, ne- why do you think it's called Honey Nut? Because I've never heard of a Honey Nut before. Uh, it's a sexual reference. That's what like, I was thinking. That you, you know, Honey Nut in your exactly. mouth. Exactly. I'm so glad that our minds are in the same place. Satan knows either what he's that, doing with marketing. You know? <laughs> either, either we're in the same place or you have seen my stand-up comedy set because that's oh, exactly really? what I say on stage. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did I say? You said you said uh I always say on stage, did someone say give me that honey nut? <laughs> like Yeah. <laughs> and that's it's exactly all, what it's you all said. on purpose. It's all yeah. sexual. I think uh has had a lot to do with the creation of most of these cereals. Like, really? Yeah, he's he's chairman of the board over the, over there at General Mills. I did not and, know that. Yeah, frosted mini wheats. Oh Let's my say, gosh! Captain Crunch, Satan, um, Lucky Charms, Satan. Wow! Basically all of them. So well, this is something that's kind of nuts for me because oh I God. I've built a podcast about cereal, and now I'm finding out that uh, that Satan, the person who I've been trying surprised? to avoid. Oh, you know who was really evil? 
Who's that? Uh, that Dr. Kellogg. Really? Dr. Yes. Kellogg? Why Dr. is that? Who, the, the guy behind Kellogg's cereal? Oh, yeah. Oh, have you? Oh, Google him. Really? Google him sometime. I'm not sure if, uh, if Dr. Kellogg was the reason why this happened, but I do know that the reason why Frost or why uh, Cornflakes was made was because it was to stop people from masturbating, correct? Yes. No, no. Ex- thank you. Thank you. That's yes. I was just getting to that. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Kellogg, the creator of Kellogg's cereal, um, who was manipulated by Satan, he, um, he was, his whole thing was he didn't want kids to ever masturbate. Mm-hmm. So he dedicated his life to that. Uh, cornflakes, they thought exactly that it would help them not masturbate. And then uh, he was a huge advocate for circumcision in the United States. Interesting. It wasn't a like big thing. Like it wasn't just now it's like, okay, everybody is circumcised. Otherwise, you get made fun of. And back then, that wasn't the way it was. Right. He thought that circumcision would l- lead to a decrease in masturbation. Wow. I didn't and know that. that's how he pitched it and sold it. And uh, America, being a Puritan nation, liked that. And, and, that's, and that's how history is made, folks. Man, that is, that is very, very history interesting. History is written by the, written by the winners. Yeah. Winners. By and so yeah, I mean to each their own. If you, I mean it certainly makes sense as to why I'm so horny after I have uh, cookie crisp. But uh, but <laughs> Satan, yeah, Satan, mm-hmm. cookie crisp. Yeah, absolutely. cookie crisp is good though. Yeah, I like, love. I, you cookie know what crisp. I like about cookie crisp? It doesn't. You know, it just owns it. Yeah. It's not like oh, here's some healthy stuff and some some unhealthy stuff. You know, and you can get have both. It's just like I'm cookies. F- you exactly. Yeah, you want cookies for breakfast? Here, <laughs> here they are. Yeah, yeah I know great. this is what you want. Cookies yeah. and milk. Eat. Yeah, yeah, it's it's delicious. I absolutely love it. Well, uh, to just to to go into our next bit, God, uh, the the thing we like to do on this podcast is we like to review a box of cereal uh, with our Ooh. guest Ooh. and. Um, I like to get a cereal that has something to do with my guest in some way, shape, or form. So I spoke with my sponsors over at Post Cereals. Now, by sponsor, I mean that I like them and I buy all their products. Oh. And by spoke to, I mean that I tweeted them repeatedly and they never got back to me. Yeah. Um, so the cereal that I chose for you is Birthday Cake Pebbles cereal. <gasps> Ooh, yeah. birthday cake pebbles. Yeah, so the reason why I chose this for you is because I wanted to go back to the most prehistoric cereal that I could find that oh. reminded me of you. <laughs> so, which is why I went with a Flintstones brand cereal. And uh, and birthday cake, nothing, nothing is more amazing to me than the birth of God and the birth of Jesus. So we're <laughs> celebrating that. We're celebrating the birth of God, the birth of Jesus, um, and uh, and also fun fact: uh, this year is the fiftieth birthday of Pebbles. So wow. yeah, so wow. we're celebrating it on this podcast together. Only, the design on that is just only Satan could make a cereal like that. <laughs> right? <laughs> only yeah. Satan could make that. I can't yeah. do that. Birthday cake? That sounds horrifyingly bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, uh, from what I understand, and we can look at the back here, um, as you, as you can see. The back is even better than the front. Yeah, yeah they're just celebrating good. there uh, with, on their 50th birthday, wow. um, as you can see. That's a collector's item. It sure is, which is why I haven't opened it just yet, even though I probably will uh, to try this cereal at some point. Um, but from what, to my understanding, um, this right is... Now. There, there are, as a serial uh, aficionado uh, on this podcast, there have been a lot of birthday cake flavored cereals lately. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this one definitely, uh, no pun intended, takes the cake. This is probably the best tasting birthday cake cereal. So you have tasted it? Yes, absolutely. Oh, what does it taste like? Sheet cake? It tastes, exactly. That's, it tastes like a, uh, like a vanilla uh, sheet cake. Absolutely. Yeah. So they, there's a lot of sugar. Uh, so can we read the um, 
the nutrition facts. The nutrition facts. Absolutely, I'm yeah. Interested in how many calories it says. Uh, it says calories, please, and then it says uh, <laughs> total carbohydrates. Sign me up. And then it says, um, <laughs> total, <laughs> come on. Yeah, and then it says total sugars, type two diabetes. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but thankfully, it is gluten free. So as uh, you can what? see, on the box, oh yeah. Satan. Yeah, that is You're that so is such good. a Satan thing to do is to put is to give you other problems, but then say it's gluten free though. You know, so I I definitely hey agree with somehow you. it's gluten free. <laughs> yeah, there should yeah. be gluten in this, in fact, but isn't. So since we can't really review this cereal together, I thought that it would be fun uh, for us to kind of do a birthday cake pebbles commercial for our guests to then be inspired to go to the store and buy this but i think it would be fun if you did it god uh and you were able to kind of give us just a a raving review or some sort of commercial uh you can if you want you can do it as fred or barney flintstone oh, but what or, if i don't like it i clearly I, th- I said it comes from satan i mean diabetes man, i can't yeah, be this is, i this can't is be promoting tough. this as god people take things i say very seriously but that only is when very it's true when well, only when it's something they want to believe yes like well, you know eating unhealthy cereal is good yeah well i mean one thing that i can say is that um you you god do not have to sign the the waiver saying that you agree with this however if you say this as fred flintstone or barney flintstone i think it's totally fine what would you what what do i what do i get uh, okay well this is the price of being here okay yeah well it's completely up to you we don't have to do anything you don't want to do god listen to the god pod folks here we go (laughs) yabba dabba (laughs) do Try my new birthday cake, Pebbles. It's me, Fred Flintstone. Yabba dabba do. You do you like diabetes? <laughs> Try my new birthday cake, Pebbles. Yabba dabba dabba do. I love it. Oh my gosh, this was amazing. Birthday cake, Pebbles, ladies and gentlemen. They said it couldn't be done. They were probably right, but we did it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. This is the Jurassic Park principle on full display. Oh they my god. Shouldn't have done it. <laughs> They oh, were man. so obsessed about whether they, they could. They didn't stop to think about whether they should. Yeah. Never never in my life did I ever think that I would get God to review Pebbles as Fred Flintstone. What an amazing, I mean, there's, I, I'm just smiling ear to ear right now. This is uh, such a great moment in yeah. this podcast. Let's talk about cartoons now. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. If you want to, now if we're you talking about talk- cere- if you talk about cereal, it feels the natural progression is Saturday morning cartoons. I agree. Like, what were your favorite Saturday morning cartoons? Okay, a uh, gummy bear <laughs> bouncing here and there and everywhere. Yeah. That one had the best theme song. Yes, man. Um, I see. Um, he Man's making a comeback. Apparently, sure is with Kevin Smith as the head writer. Mark Hamill is going to play Skeletor. Skeletor, absolutely, yeah. So um, Kevin Smith is the is the head writer of the show. Uh, Mark wow. Bernardin is the other head writer uh, who has written for a bunch of different um, uh, Hollywood Reporter and like other places like that. Um, and uh, they have a podcast together, which you know this. Gonna, you know they're going to put in some messed up humor in there. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be there's going to be some side quests where He Man has to do a Dutch oven or something like that. So <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Yeah, and I saw the new toys are being unveiled. They look amazing. With of course, thirty yeah. points of reticulation. Yeah, and not only that, something it's uh, you know it's coming out on Netflix, and I don't know if Ooh. you've been seeing um, the the animation company that made the Castlevania anime for Netflix mm. is the animation department that's doing He Man, so it's gonna look I need to get awesome. them to make my pilot. Yes, absolutely. You, if anyone should have an anime, it's God. Well, not anime. I don't want anime. Okay, but, but you you want I, it to be more like a Hanna Barbera kind of thing. We we can have a special segment where it's it's anime, but yeah, sure. I yeah. Uh, oh man, so many good shows that I like. Like, have you seen Cobra Kai on 
I sure the- have. Absolutely. I love oh, Cobra Kai. The Nostalgia City. Yeah. Uh, wow. And uh, all the things. All yeah. the things on the shows. I recently watched, I have Peacock. I'm watching. Um, oh, you're the one that has Peacock? <laughs> I'm the one. Okay. Oh, Peacock is good. Oh, yeah. Got, because they've actually got shows. I'm, I'm a, I love sitcom. Sure. Me so, too. Like, I watched this, I binged the Soul Show Superstore. Oh, yeah. That's a oh, great one. So good. That's a great one. That has so, a lot of great comedians in it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the final season takes place during the pandemic. And oh, does it? I did not know that. A lot of these shows, you know, like I remember watching The Office. I'm a huge fan of The Office now, sure. like most people. Yeah. But because you got to watch all of it on Netflix. Well, interesting. Let me ask you this before you talk about The Office. Um, you, the thing about my generation, uh, the millennial generation, is there are two personalities, and those personalities are The Office, Office or Friends. Um, oh, really? Or yeah. Harry Potter? Yeah. And well, Harry Potter is is the movie universe, but like that's uh, but that's right now the the personalities that are really taking over are are the Office or Friends. Yeah. So would so, you say you're more of an Office personality? I love The Office. And I have a psychotic <laughs> hatred for friends. <laughs> sure. I, this is why I believe in you, God, because oh, I feel God. like this is the same exact thought that I have. I, well, I was a huge fan of Seinfeld. And that's, that show has got a sick sense of humor, so I liked it. Yes. And then out, here's like, here's friends. And it's just Seinfeld, except we're hot. <laughs> and I was like, fuck you, you cynical bastards i can clearly see that satan got in on this and even more so which actually is more believable that satan got in on friends uh friends is just living single with white people Ooh. Ooh, mic drop somebody had to say it it's true it's true and not only that living single makes way more sense that they're in new york because they actually live in like normal apartments they don't live in this one this apartment that none of them can afford being like a chef once a week you know or whatever yeah i just don't like any show that resorts to like canned laughter which i feel that i could be wrong but friends i don't know yeah they definitely bought all the canned laughter at the grocery store yeah (laughs) anyway i mean shows like the office i didn't i liked it but i didn't like wasn't obsessed with it sure when it came out live because you had to wait a week Mm -hmm. and although it was good it was you know it's not the same as when you get to watch a show on a streaming service and you can just watch the progression from one to the next to the next it's so much better when you watch these shows that way yes i i completely agree and in fact i um you know, I was joking about being the only one on Peacock. I had Peacock for a bit, um, at least the premium version, so that I could watch uh, the new Saved by the Bell, which was mm-hmm. surprisingly good. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I love AP Bio, just because... I need to I'm, check that out. Yeah, It's very good. I, I'm a fan of Patton Oswalt, as well yeah. as... Um, as uh, oh my gosh, I forget his name. He's from Sunny. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's great as well. Um, and it's just a really well written show. Uh, mm-hmm. And also, it's, it's, um, I forget, I forget the the name of it, or an ensemble comedy. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what it is. It's oh, like, I love, the, those. I love yeah. workplace comedies. That's why, yeah. you know, Superstore is like the, is, I actually like Superstore better than The Office. No. Sure, absolutely. I mean, which just feels crazy. <laughs> the Office has amazing moments. Mm-hmm. Ryan started the fire. <laughs> i could watch that a million times but yeah. uh it's got i'm working my way through brooklyn 99 right oh, now that's amazing i love brooklyn 99 it's uh funny but i'm like when are you gonna talk about all the bad <laughs> cops do <laughs> uh but i'll do ap bio next for sure yeah ap bio is really good i mean i if you're if you're definitely a fan of ensemble comedies it's not i mean it's it is a workplace comedy but like it's not a workplace comedy by definition because like they're not really working they're at school you know but it's oh no of course but but just a setting a a very relatable setting exactly yeah exactly high school or you know 
Walmart. These are places that right people yeah. actually go to. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny because I um yes. I haven't seen all of Superstore yet, though now through your recommendation, I'm actually wanting to watch it. Oh, um, my favorite character on that show is Mateo. Oh, Mateo. Yeah, Mateo's great. Kills me. Yeah, Kills absolutely. Me. Yeah, he's so what funny. What an amazing actor, Nico Santos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody on that show is great. And, everybody, uh, I know. And not only that, like, I feel... Dina. I feel like that show is would be a lot bigger if it were on Netflix because I think that's what The Office had. Right. Uh, like The Office was on Netflix and then that's why it got big again. And I kind of feel right. the same way about Friends where like when they had Friends on Netflix, then it got big again. Um, yeah, now you have these streaming wars. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and Simpsons how do you feel Disney about Plus. the streaming wars? How do you feel about that? I, I, you know, it sucks for people mm-hmm. who can't, you can't get them all. Yeah. Um, I have Disney Plus. <laughs> right. I have uh, Peacock. I have to. I just, this is, this, this is why humans exist. Right. Is so that they can make me entertainment. Exactly. Because I can't do it on my own. <laughs> you can't write your own jokes and then laugh at them later. It's insanity. Right. It's true. But uh, I like, you know, Netflix has been kind of barren lately. I agree. Uh, quite frankly. Um, what else? Amazon Prime. I'm going to be interviewing a uh, screenwriter of a movie that's on there called Faith Based with Jason Alexander. Oh really? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I've uh, I I forget his name, but I've heard him on uh, Good Christian Fun, which is a, a podcast that I really love. Uh, and yeah. he I, he's very relatable uh, to my life as well. Uh, like I I kind of have the same upbringing as him, and he's very funny. Um, yeah. That movie, Luke that, Barnett. Uh, yeah, I've been wanting to watch that movie. Uh, is yeah. it, is it on Prime right now? That's what. Yep, it's on Prime. Okay. That's so I'm awesome. gonna watch that before the interview. Um, so Amazon Prime has good stuff like The Boys. Have you seen The Boys? Yes, absolutely. Oh, so good. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I really, I really related to Star Girl quite a bit. On that really, show. I, I yeah. relate to Homelander. Yeah, you know, except <laughs> that, that makes I, a lot of sense. <laughs> except that I can't do the laser eye beams anymore. Right. Yeah. You know, my powers are pretty weak. Yeah. Uh, as more and, pe- more and more people turn away from believing in me. You know, I did a poll in my stories last night. It was like, do you believe in God? 77% said no. And yeah, I saw that page. poll. I saw that poll. I, I was like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. The, you see what the, I had to put up with. Yeah. And not only that, all of uh, this is the thing that I also found weird is that 70% don't believe in you, but they also follow you on Instagram. Yeah, I got a lot of comments. It was like, listen, I don't believe in the fake one. You, I like. Right. I'm like, okay, all right. So just because you don't believe in me, you, you still like me? And like, right. Yeah. That is very interesting. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure why are so sure hard to understand. Happens. Well, yeah. my experience online, quite frankly, has been that uh, heathens love me. Yeah. And the super religious hate me. Really? And they come at me and they're like, you're not God. And I'm like, yes, I am. It says it right there. And they're like, no, you're not. <laughs> and I'm like, are you saying you don't believe in me? And they're like, not in you. I believe in the real. I said, you're an atheist. Yeah. And, and round and round we go. My goodness, that, that said, is just... I tell them, prove to me that I'm not God. <laughs> <laughs> and then they say, well, guess my cousin's father's last, you know, middle name. And I say, do not test the Lord thy God. That's great. That's great. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Just bring it right back to the whole not testing God. I good love times. It. It's good times. It is good times. In fact, I wanted to let our listeners know where can they find the God Pod. Let's talk about the God Pod. When did you start it? All that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And obviously, I, I mean, not to answer your question before you, uh, but you know, the the God Pod has a Patreon uh, where you can get exclusive episodes on there, um, and it's uh, it's just a hoot and a half. I love that podcast. Thank you, Mike. Thank yeah. you. It's, it's, yeah, I, I was tired of 
these televangelists and these right-wing dingbats speaking in my name all the time and making me out to be some kind of a-hole or bigot. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to start my own social media. You know, I started my Facebook page in 2011. I've uh, almost got 4 million, which sounds like a lot, but it forgot it's pathetic. Right. I've got like 500,000 on Twitter and Instagram each, which again, that sounds pretty good, but it's also for me, it's pathetic. <laughs> um, you know, people want to see 10 million at least. You're God. Of course. Yeah. So please follow me on all those platforms. Uh, I my mean, podcast you, is you're, you're 100% the most famous person I've had on this podcast. For oh, sure. Well, yeah. there's always another mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just put it that way. So yeah. uh, my podcast could, I could use some more sub subscribers and yeah. downloads. You just, you can find all of these things at the godpodcast.com. You, uh, you can get a taste for the episodes. You can find links to all my social media. You can find a link to the Patreon. You know, we, we offer you an extra episode per week. So we do two episodes a week. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are doing quite a bit. And, uh, and not only that, you're interviewing some really cool people. Like you're interviewing writers from Marvel Comics, uh, DC Comics. Uh, you, yeah, you we just, just had we just an Emmy Award. Slot. Yeah. Yeah. You just had a, uh, an Oscar winning director on your yeah, podcast. That, that one came out today. We, we got yeah. to talk to uh, Oscar winning director Trayvon Free on Monday and it was absolutely delightful and fascinating. He's just an amazing human being. And yeah. I, I can't believe that he did the podcast. I'm still like, you know, in disbelief. <laughs> I don't see, uh, but here's the thing is like. He comes from comedy. He's such a nice guy, you know. He's, right. But I would also say like, just for me, uh, and, and this is just my thought is like, he probably uh, like, who wouldn't want to do God's podcast? You know what I, I mean? He's, fo he's actually followed me on Twitter for years. Sure. So. Yeah. I mean, so, I've been, I've been following you on social media as well. It was kind of, I was actually extremely uh, starstruck when you started following me on social media. Aww. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy because there's nice people out there and, and not everybody's going to dislike you. Right. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> sometimes I'll get in my head. I'll be like, why doesn't this person like me? Why don't they follow me? I follow them. Am I not right. good enough for them? And, and how come this other person doesn't text me back? <laughs> right. Like, or how come I like their posts, but they never like mine? Right. Social media will drive you crazy. And that's Satan's plan. Of course. But you have to pay less attention to the people that you hate or that don't like you and pay more attention to the people that do like you. Yeah. And the people that you do love. And, and, maybe it's something wrong with me and I passed it on to you humans, but I, I definitely have that problem where I'm like, I always want, why don't they love me? I want everyone to love me. I'm like George Costanza as God. Right. Uh, just so needy. Please don't make fun of me. Please don't have other idols before me. Please just love me. Follow my podcast. Listen, I need, I live for your praise, humans. I want to get my laser <laughs> eye beams back. <laughs> no, I, I, I completely agree. Uh, uh, this has just been an amazing time being able to talk to you. Uh, I have a couple of questions before we wrap uh, that I have left for you, uh, if you're okay with that. Yeah. Um, and you can answer them however you'd like. It's uh, fine, yeah. It's, it's, it's just, you know, I'm God, but I wasn't planning on doing anything today. Right. <laughs> or tomorrow. Fair enough, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, but the uh, this is going to be very interesting, asking God these questions, but I'm, I'm very curious. Um, mm -hmm. What advice would you give yourself as, uh, as a child right now? Um, wow. So if, what advice would I give the earlier version of myself? Exactly. Oh, wow. Be less mighty, mm -hmm. get more sleep. Um, if you're going to walk around the desert and lead people around the desert, bring a map. Yeah. That's very good. You know, there's so many things. Maybe don't turn Lot's wife to salt. 
it's, it's a bit harsh. It was a bit harsh. I agree. And I never did that again. You'll notice. That is very true. You only did it uh, once. If you're going to flood the world, make sure it doesn't get put in a book so that yeah. everyone knows your own book. It's like, what, you wanted people to know that you did a genocide? <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, usually people that that uh, commit maybe their own don't genocide. Do genocide. Yeah, maybe don't don't do the, yeah. Yeah, the that's definitely something do. I would agree with. Do not commit genocide for yeah. sure. Yeah, genocide's bad. Yeah, genocide is. I mean, it is a hot take, but I would say genocide is not good. I would say um, that's why people are so afraid. Right. Right. They're kind of afraid of your of your stand up comedy. Yeah, I'm just th- these takes are just too sick. Right. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Now, let me ask you this, just to kind of get the hills and valleys of this, of all of this, what mm. do you think that that younger version of God would think of who you are now? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. He'd you think would, you're a simp, probably. You've gone soft. <laughs> yeah, you're a simp, dude. That's what it's. Simp like. God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I call him a simpleton. That's great. Oh my but gosh. I don't, I don't care what previous God thinks. <laughs> smitey, I love it. Smitey jerk. You need therapy and medication. <laughs> earlier version of me. I love it. Oh my gosh. Uh, this has been such a blast, God. Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I mean, obviously subscribe to the God pod, the God uh, and let everyone know where they can find you online. God. Yeah. I mean, if you go to the godpodcast.com, you can find the links to my Twitter, my Instagram, my uh, Facebook, YouTube. We have, we have cartoons. Sure um, do. Yeah. I just, the godpodcast.com, it's all there. I feel like I, after that Hills and Valleys thing, I need to maybe lie down on a, on a couch, <laughs> maybe talk to Sigmund Freud, Freud, <laughs> Freudian slip. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Those uh, those are the guys that have tigers, right? Thinking about the earlier version <laughs> of myself. Yeah. And what he th- would think of me and what I would think of him. It's wow. That one is whew, It's kind of tough, stuff. man. It's Threw uh, me for a loop. Yeah, it's kind of tough. I it, it has been a question that uh that gets people you emotional. know, e- it, yeah, emotional and uh and yeah. vulnerable. Uh, which is why I love it, you know, because it's something that is constantly reminding us, you know, what, what that person with a dream had, you know, because, especially because a lot of the people that I interview are in the entertainment business. And, um, and it came from just a real moment that I had with myself, where I was auditioning for something, and I hated that I was auditioning for it. And then I, uh, you know, I mostly because I didn't think I was going to get the job. Um, And then I would go to every callback like annoyed because I knew I wasn't going to get the job. And I ended up getting the job anyway, you know, and it was just like, it was this thing where I told myself like the 10 year old version of you would be so excited that you're even auditioning for something because that 10 year old would be so stoked that, that, that your dream you know, when he was, you know, when I was 10, my dream was to be on Nickelodeon. And I, I, I've been on Nickelodeon now, you know, like I've done it, you know, and, and like, you know, sure, I didn't get slimed. But you know, at the end of the day, I I was still on Nickelodeon, you know, I, I, I've gotten to do those things um, that I wanted to do as a child. And it was something that I always forgot about. You still got a long way to go. Of course, we all do. And at the end of the day, that's the thing is like, we, we still need to make sure that we're keeping that kid with the dream happy because that's the, that's the kid that still believes in well, the that's magic. Part of my torture is I feel like earlier version of God would be like, why did you let things get so f-ed up? Right. Exactly. And well, for you, it's kind of the opposite. <laughs> just for a because, long time. I just, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. For, I, I kind of like the way that you've, chilled out recently i'm into that um i'm I'm into that a little bit more yeah i mean granted a lot of people would say covid is kind of the new flood but you know 
Yeah. Yeah. It's but um, but also to be fair, Satan. like yeah. But also to be fair, Satan. Exactly. That's uh that's I bl- a good all the bad it. things. Just blame Satan. Yeah. All that's definitely things. what I do. That's the, okay. I mean, it's definitely <laughs> what I do. I uh I I always say not today, Satan. That's my that's my mantra every morning. Oh, I say that a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I sh- you know what? I should say it more. I yeah. kind of said it in the last episode several times. Yeah. Satan was trying to pitch his ideas to Trayvon for, you know, movies and TV shows for Hollywood. Oh, and man. I, and I was Perfect like, moment. It, Satan, Satan, you just it's never not today, up. Satan. I yeah. should have said, not today, Satan. Exactly. You because that was a big that. interview. Damn it. Previous version of me from three <laughs> days ago. <laughs> That was definitely, yeah, that was definitely a, a Gen Z thing. Think, you always think of the best thing later. I know. That happens all the anyway, time. Anyway, right? I'm going to focus on all the good things because it was a great interview. Agreed. And stop beating myself up for the things I did wrong. Agreed. You've done so many good things, uh, and I'm, I'm very thankful uh, for the good things that you've done. Um, and even, you know, as, as a person who believes in you, sometimes I'm thankful for the bad things that you've done because that's allowed me to learn. So, um, so yeah, I, um, I I mean, spoken like a true simp, to be honest. Um, (laughs) From simp to pimp. But anyway, uh, for for me, if you want to follow me on social media, you can find me at Mike Valdez on Instagram at I am Mike Valdez on Twitter and who is MikeValdez.com to find out the answer to that question. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you Woo! so much for listening. Subscribe. Tell all of your friends so we can grow this family. Bye, besties. Bye.